Hello everyone and welcome to a new edition of Local Cafe, episode 86. Today uh, we have a special edition where we'll uh, do a live upgrade to one of the systems, one of the Pantanap systems to 120. Uh, as many of you already know, 120 in it's a major uh, upgrade for us and it, it does require some uh, uh, special steps to go over. Uh, but before that, uh, let me give a brief introductions to, to people that are new to this event. This is something that we are doing uh, every week on Wednesday, uh, same hour, and it's a uh, community event. It's a technical event. We get together to uh, showcase new features, new techniques, uh, techniques that we learn from our support channels, from the community, or uh, the biggest uh, part of it, like uh, today as well, will be a hands-on uh, approach, hands-on development with plant and append low code. Um, this event, uh, as you noticed, is uh, being recorded and it will be published on our YouTube channel. Uh, all editions, all past editions are there. Lots of very good training content, so make sure to visit and subscribe and browse through them. Uh, there is a very uh, helpful uh, uh, table of content on, on each video, so you can jump directly to the sections that are most interesting to you. Cool. So the agenda for today, I will uh, uh, give you a brief uh, update about the product, about the uh, current release that's nearly, nearly uh, ready to be published, and then uh, we'll hear some stories from uh, from Dale, our head of support. Some stories from uh, from the trenches, from the support channels, and he will continue into showing us uh, a live example of upgrading to 120. Okay, so uh, nothing uh, nothing major uh, to give in terms of uh, of uh, product updates. We are still on track to go live with 120 next week. Beta is currently running, so if you are interested to help test this release to make sure that it uh, it's the solid when we release it, uh, we'd appreciate your help. Uh, if you want to join the beta program, uh, reach out uh, to me or uh, or to any any of us, and we'll make sure you get access. Uh, and for people already in the beta, uh, please keep it coming. We want to make this uh, a very good release, especially as this release touched nearly all the front-end code of the product. Uh, and then uh, we've already started the planning, so next week we'll start developing 121. Uh, the major milestone for us in 121 that is visible uh, will be uh, the multi-environment and easier deployment uh, between uh, between uh, environments. This is a long time uh, coming feature and uh, we are finally ready to tackle it. Of course, it will require changing the infrastructure a bit, so we are transitioning to, to Docker. Uh, of course, the application will still run as uh, as a let's say IIS application up until now. Uh, but to access the new capability, the multi environment and deployments, a Docker setup will be required. Okay, so uh, with that being said, I will uh, take it to Dale to give us the stories from the trenches. All right. Hello. Arrange things here a little a bit. Okay. So um, just a tackling just a little bit from the trenches here, uh, talking about hotfixes. So we have previously released eight hotfixes to version 119, and there's one new one that was released this week. Um, it's been long planned for, and I've talked about it, but this is the important one that uh, allows people who use community uh, DNN to update DNN automatically. So uh, this has been flagged as an important update to apply. Uh, we encourage you definitely to do it. And it will bring App Builder and uh, up to uh, 119.49. What that means then is that, that after that, you'll have the ability to upgrade uh, DNN with one click if you're on community. And um, since our next platform, 1.20, the one we're about to release, the one we're beta testing now, uh, requires 990, this will help you uh, uh, get to um, install 
DNN before you, you can install our product. And uh, we don't recommend that you even try to install our product uh, with, without being at DNN 99, you may encounter errors. So very important to install this one and then use it to upgrade. And I'm gonna demonstrate that live today. Um, just a couple thoughts about upgrades. We're gonna be demonstrating the DNN upgrade today. We're also gonna demonstrate the Plantin app one-click upgrade. Uh, and then as a best practice to take a look at the add-ons, uh, take a look at the uh, updates page and see what you have installed and make sure that your add-ons got updated as well. Um, we are, uh, and then if, if you don't, what to do about that. So we'll deal with that. Um, a little promo for Campfire. Campfire is a group that gets together on Fridays the same hour. And uh, on, on April 1, this Friday, uh, we'll be talking about uh, the version 1.20 beta testing program and things that you're finding in there. Um, I think Bogdan is going to be able to show the ability to use the plant and app gear icon uh, under skins uh, themes other than the plant and app themes. And so that's going to be a, a, a cool capability that will uh, perhaps keep you out of DNN edit mode and some of the problems that that uh, encounters. And then, uh, and, and it will be hosted by Bogdan because uh, I'm going to be off for the day, so, which is just fun for me. Uh, next Friday, April 8, we're going to uh, continue the discussion about multi-portal and uh, Bogdan and I will both be on that call. So I encourage you to jump into Campfire. And with that, um, let me put the links on for this episode. So that's going to be on the chat. Um, so that includes um, that you can register in advance for Campfire, that our webinar recordings, where to find them, uh, the community portal um, where you can submit um, questions that the community answers in our forum section. And that's also where we've implemented the beta test program. And then our web webinar feedback form, that's a, a nice uh, Google form that you can suggest, uh, comment on this webinar and suggest topics uh, going forward. All right. Um, so moving on, hands-on low coding. Today we're gonna tackle Upgrading uh, Campfire website live. This is, uh, what is it? Um, up on the higher, high wire without a net. Well, a little bit of a net. We've backed up the site, but um, the uh, we'll, we'll be upgrading that to um, DNN and our version 120, and then starting to tackle Bootstrap 5 and seeing what we encounter with that. So, um, with that, uh, these are the things that we're going to start to do. Uh, we're going to upgrade DNN and, and plant an app. We're going to make sure in, in that the steps, we're going to check for the required hotfix. We'll get DNN upgraded. We'll uh, upgrade plant an app as well. And then we'll check for those add-ons. So let's get started. Um, the updates happen here. And um, the um, I, I, the, the hotfix that I mentioned uh, would be listed here for you. Uh, it's the same text that I showed you on that previous screen, but we already have 119.49. Uh, so we, this, this is the thing that gets us the ability to um, upgrade DNN. So it tells us that we're on DNN 991. It's going to take us to 9.10.2 if we click it and the latest version is 9.10.2. So this is going to uh, upgrade us all the way to current. And so I'm going to click that and it tells me what it's, we're going to do. Uh, it makes sure it reminds you to have a backup of your database and site before proceeding, which I have. And so um, we'll, we'll go ahead and click install. Now this is a great place to remind you that you can ask questions and uh, either on the chat or in the question and answer section. Be, uh, and it's a great time to do that because there's going to be a couple of delays here as we get this installed. So when we, uh, what's, what's going on is that it's automatically um, activating the, uh, the plant and app dialogue, excuse me, the, the DNN dialogue. 
And so uh, that requires super user access. And so I had to provide my uh, super user, my host password uh, for the site. And um, so now it's upgrading DNN. So we'll head back, we'll visit the website. And of course, these things take a minute to, to reload. So that process, as you can see, pretty painless if you have the super user access. So you want to plan for that and plan for the backup. So we're going to verify that 9102 has been installed once this comes up. And then we will go ahead with uh, the plant and app 1.20 upgrade. So here we go. Our site has come up. We're going to go to, oh, I'm going to look for it here in servers. And so we see we're at 9102. So the upgrade has happened. That was pretty painless. Um, so now we can go into configuration and look at the updates there. So we're at Planton App version 119.49. And we go to updates and notice the DNN ver uh, button is gone because we're current. And so now we can uh, update. We're, we're going to uh, get version 120. Version 120 has a, ha all the, the uh, change notes for 120 are listed here. There's a few breaking changes. I encourage you to take a look at them, but I'm going to uh, tell you what, I'm going to duplicate this page. We might come back here and talk about I'll leave that there in case we want to come back and talk about them. But here's version 120, and we'll start that process and install. Um, okay, so I'm going to try and keep up on my other screen with where we are. Um, while this is upgrading, I've just mentioned the, uh, the Campfire website, if you're not familiar with it, is the site that we use in common uh, for that Friday event. And it's the ability for people to um, both look at, both submit solutions that uh, accomplish things using low code. And then uh, because they're, it's, a, it's a site that's held in common, everyone can take a look at uh, how a solution was implemented. So if you're part of the, the Campfire group, you get uh, the ability to access the site and uh, see how these little bits of things that are useful and, and uh, you'll likely encounter or might want to implement in your websites, that's an opportunity to uh, see how those things are built and uh, not have to do it yourself, uh, or at least completely yourself. Um, so while that's processing away, let's look at these breaking change. Um, one of them is that Glyph icon has been removed, and so we're switching to Font Awesome. And it lets you know that uh, anytime glyph icons were used in your site previously, uh, they're flipped to a font awesome circle. And uh, that means that we, uh, this is one of those things that you're going to want to look at on your site, places where uh, icons might have been put in. You're going to see a lot of that in what we're doing today. Very easy to replace, but it is something that you're going to, a step that you're going to have to take. Uh, also, let's see, this is done here. So I'm going to uh, refresh this just to uh, make sure it is fresh. And then we'll, we'll finish these breaking changes. So uh, we've already talked about that DNN version, a higher version is required. You have to get to at least 991 enabled in order to be able to use version 120. Um, there's an obsolete date picker that uh, you're going to have to convert. Um, and then the currency field has changed. And we're going to hit at least one of these, the currency field today. So with that, um, let's see, I don't want to get too many screens open. It's going to be plenty going on here anyway. So we have uh, done these first few steps. We look for the hotfix. We uh, upgraded DNN. We got Plant and App to version 120. So now is a great time to check our add-ons. Uh, and really, I'm just going to scan through uh, all of our add-ons and modules start with version 
um, with the version number of 05. Uh, our app builder products start with version 01, but they go hand in hand. So we are at the uh, subversion of 20. And as we just scan down through here, we can see that everything has been updated to 20. If you found any products, particularly add-ons that didn't upgrade to the current version, you might uh, um, check with uh, support in order to be able to get an updated version. Um, we're working to have them install automatically, but uh, if, they, if they did not install automatically, like we had an issue with uh, the touch signature, uh, the electronic signature module in a previous version didn't update, uh, now, now it did, so this is great. But if you have anything that's not at dot twenty, check with support, and we'll we'll get you set up. So that's checking our add-on versions. So now the what we're going to do is just take a look at, at the campfire site. Oh, excuse that noise. Um, the uh, close that out so it doesn't do it again. Um, So we're gonna take a look at the site the way it is, and then uh, just so that you know what we're doing, and then we're gonna start converting some of these pages to Bootstrap 5. So I just wanna point out one of the known limitations. We're still in beta. Uh, so what we're running is a version 1.20 beta, and we're, gonna, we're going to encounter a few errors. Um, hopefully we're gonna stamp out a lot of these before, you, before it gets to a production release. Everything we know about, we're going to eliminate. But if you encounter errors, we'll talk about what to do with them. But we are going to encounter some today. So the first thing we're going to focus on is the home page and um, what that looks like, and uh, then uh, how to convert that to uh, Bootstrap Five. So if we go preview the site and we look at the home page, we see we have a menu, we have a form, a couple of buttons. And because we're logged in, we can go into edit mode on the page or use uh, uh, the gear icon that I mentioned earlier. And for me, I, I'm going to, to put it into edit mode. The, the, the process to, to put it into um, uh, Bootstrap 5 um, is that we're, we need to change the page to load Bootstrap 5. We covered this in a couple of the last episodes, so I'm not gonna to spend too much time on it. So I'm just gonna to navigate to um, the page advanced appearance. And since we're using page builder, instead of using the default, we're gonna use the version that has Bootstrap 5 included. So we'll save that and refresh. And then uh, the other thing that, we're, that we do, uh, we start getting this warning that says Bootstrap 3, both, both versions are on the page. That's because we've added Bootstrap 5 uh, through that page change. And then this um, module hasn't been converted yet. So I am going to go to the home page form that's here. This is a uh, form from uh, Plantinet product. We'll go to settings and change it to Bootstrap 5. And in this case, that's all we're going to do. We're going to save and refresh. And so now this, the, the warning goes away. And now we'll, we can test uh, the view, uh, sign up for campfire webinar button uh, simply takes you to the registration page. So if you wanted to be part of that, you, uh, you can go to campfire.plantinapp.com and click the sign up button. And uh, view contributions just takes us to another page on our site and uh, it comes up. So we have successfully completed uh, changing the home page over to Bootstrap 5. That's all that was required and it still works fine. So the next one is uh, the contributions page. And again, as, as for the most part, what we're going to do moving forward uh, for, for today is just to uh, convert pages and to see what we encounter. Well, the next one is the contributions page. And uh, so let's see how this works. Notice first that uh, what I warned about that all these things are circles now. Um, and, and so we don't have icons anymore. This is, the, this is a good um, indication. It'd be great if you had um, an, an image of your site before you did the conversion. So, uh, for example, if you do this on a clone or if you have a backup, you could take a look at it. 
but uh, this button is an edit button, this button is a delete button, this button is a go button. So we'll have to pick some icons that make sense for that. And then um, it, it hasn't changed over into Bootstrap 5 yet, and so um, we'll, uh, we'll do those separately. Um, let's start with the icons since I called those out. So we go in and edit our listing and look in the buttons section. So we have item buttons for edit, delete, and go. Um, and so the font awesome, font awesome icon was set to circle. Uh, I'm going to select a different icon. And this I know, uh, let's see, I, I, I can spell. I actually want a pencil. So uh, I have something called Pencil Alt that I'm going to pick off the list. You can see an image of, of the icon. So you can skip, scroll through here and find the uh, icon that you want. I want the pencil alternate. And so just to do things just a step at a time so you can see the result, I'm going to save that and refresh. And so uh, now we see the icon has changed. This is, of course, real important with this one since we don't have any words that go with it. We could have the word edit, for example, next to it. Uh, but but we don't, we just have an icon. So the delete this, um, same thing, we'll select an icon. And this probably is something like uh, trash or, uh, yeah, here we go, trash. I'm gonna, I like this trash can here, but we have a couple to pick from. So we'll say uh, trash and save. And um, we don't have to do everything one at a time. So the go icon is more of an arrow. Um, and so I am going to select a new icon for that. And we'll see what one I like. Um, this is exciting watching me pick icons, right? I won't get over involved. We'll go, it's, we'll do an arrow to the right, arrow circle right, and save that. So now we have a trash can and a go arrow. And so that, that uh, fixes the font icon, uh, font icon, font icon. Um, we can test the functionality, make sure everything's still working. So we have uh, the ability, if you're logged into the site, you have the ability to edit a contribution. So we see our uh, main description page. Um, if we delete one, uh, it pops up this, do you want to delete it? We don't really want to delete it, so we'll say no. And then if we wanted to go to um, the, I'm, I'm going to sort this in the other direction. We got one here called dynamic grid. That's one of the ones we'll be tackling today. I'm just going to go to that contribution, open it in a new tab, and we can see this contribution. So the, the, the functionality of our contributions page is working uh, as, as we expect. Um, see, I got a guidelines button here that just takes me to another page. And so um, we see our, our guidelines. So that, that button works. Uh, if we hit new, we have a new a place to put in a new Our search says uh, our search is working. So all these are working um, and we fixed our font, I, uh, font ISOM. Awesome. But now we're, we're going to flip it to Bootstrap 5. So a minute ago, I showed you uh, flipping to Bootstrap 5. If you're going to do it manually, that was a page that was constructed by uh, us manually, but this page was actually an entity. And so we're going to go to entities and look up the contribution page and we'll just edit it. This is another way. If it's a, if it's just a contribution, you can flip it using the page U, UI library and just say bootstrap five. Now, when we go to production, this won't say experimental anymore. This is going to be the bootstrap, it'll just say bootstrap five and bootstrap three will be indicated as obsolete. But this is one of those things that while we're still in beta, it says I, uh, experimental. And that's really the only change we uh, want to make. We're gonna save and override. Um, and save and override, just so that you know, this says it's gonna regenerate the pages. And sometimes we get a list of differences. This is all the differences, what it, ex 
excuse me, what, what the app builder expected to build versus what it found. And it's finding some things that, um, that are differences, but in general, you don't need to worry about this and you can click off of it. Um, so now when I refresh the page, this should have converted to Bootstrap 5 and you can see it has a slightly different look and um, uh, both are in our ability to search and just the way things are laid out. But we can still enter new and the page pops up new. Uh, if we were to click into a, uh, an item like the grid initial sort, uh, it'll take us to a page and um, hmm, we have a, an error on the detail page. And I suspect that this has to do with uh, Bootstrap 5, and we'll have to dig into that one a little bit. And then the, we see this nice thing on the detail page where this listing is kind of bouncing around a little bit. If you see this, the bouncing around um, up and down like that, that's an indication that you have both Bootstrap 5 and Bootstrap 3 loaded on the same page. And so that's the thing that we're going to want to make sure that we resolve. Um, and this probably happened because we created something, um, created a form, for example, that was, uh, um, that App Builder didn't know anything about and couldn't change. So we'll just check everything. And here we have one, yeah, it didn't have anything selected, so it was defaulting to Bootstrap 3. So we'll change it to Bootstrap 5 and refresh the page and see what happens. Um, so now we see that error message went away. Our grid isn't bouncing. So this is an indication that the whole underlying problem was that uh, we had both Bootstrap 3 and 5 on the page. And we've resolved it just by, and, and we could have gone through all the, all the forms and made sure, but uh, I was lucky and jumped to the form that needed it and changed it to Bootstrap 5 when needed it. So, that's one of the things that you might run into. Um, so I am going to go back to the contributions page. And um, I think we'll leave it at that. This one's converted. We could do some more work with this uh, if we wanted to. Oh, I, I, uh, but for now, I'm just going to, to uh, sort it in order. And then, um, well, I remember what I wanted to do. Uh, this doesn't uh, this doesn't filter, and and um, I, and I want to make it filter. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick improvement to this form just so we can filter it out. And the reason I'm going to filter it, I'm going to work with the things that uh, that I've contributed. I'm going to start contributing, uh, enhancing my pages to Bootstrap Five. Uh, but I, uh, and I want to be able to filter out filter in on those. So uh, we're going to do that. So we'll do it a quick edit to the listing and uh, make that happen. So I think the, the, the contributor field was a templated field and it's not, and it doesn't let me filter it. So um, the way that I did this really didn't help very much. So I am going to add the, another field, the created by display name. I'm just going to add that field form and you know, put it up here kind of in the same place. And this is going to, I'm, I'm going to activate the filterable. So I think this is going to be an identical field, uh, almost identical field that we can just, yeah, see now it's, uh, we have this additional field. And we also, since I've activated filtering, we get the nice new uh, Bootstrap 5 filtering capability. And uh, so I'm going to take the second step now and just get rid of the, the original one that I we don't really need. Um, so we'll edit the listing again. And instead, on this contributor one, I'm going to delete contributor and change this one. So that kind of cleans up our listing a little bit and, um, and gives us the ability to filter. Um, 
and it sorts as well. So that's kind of nice. So um, we are uh, uh, just pointing out one of the differences that you're going to see now that we have gone to Bootstrap 5. We have a three position switch for sorting. So we can put things in order by name, click again, and it's name in reverse order, and click again, and it's unsorted. So now it goes back to the default sort for the grid. So three state sorting, that's a new feature. I want this sorted in order by ID. And I'm just going to focus in on my contributions. So I'm picking two users. Uh, I've, I've contributed under two different usernames. And so uh, now we have our, our uh, contributions that are available to keep in mind that I want to, we'll, we'll attack and try to uh, convert them into Bootstrap 5. And no open questions, so I'll keep moving. So the first one we're going to do is dynamic grid. I'm going to uh, open this in a new tab uh, and leave this here just so I can keep working down my way through this list. So um, the detail of this is it shows the name, the description, the page, and we have a go to contribution button. Um, so this was the detail page of contributions. I'm going to click to go to it. So this is the actual contribution. And what this thing did is allow that, for example, we can, or still in Bootstrap 3, having converted, we can con click a first name, a last name, and the dynamic grid that shows just shows the fields we've picked plus the ID. So if we wanted uh, instead the, uh, if we wanted only the username and the last name and say the created by person, we can submit that and the grid changes to that uh, feature. So this is, this is a cool um, functionality if you want to provide the user, your users, the ability to, to um, choose the columns that they get to see, or you can do this dynamically instead of being a selection. Anyway, that's the, the purpose of this thing, but we needed it to, uh, to bring it up to date. So for example, um, our details button has a uh, this black circle that we need to clean up. And um, the export button doesn't have uh, much, uh, same thing, black circle. Um, so uh, I'm going to keep the same order as the last time. So we'll do our font awesome work here. So we go to our uh, dynamic grids and do the cleanup work on our buttons. So the details button, we've got to pick an icon. And we could, uh, for example, we don't have to pick an icon. We could just remove that and just have a details button. And I, I think I'm going to do that just for to demonstrate that. So if you didn't need an icon, you could just remove it. And then let's say we've got export, and we want to uh, we want to clean that button up, and we want to actually provide a download. So we'll go to uh, dynamic grid buttons again, and on our export all. Uh, We'll pick, um, have export as a, there's a file export. I'm going to try and download and see what we get. Yeah, this is a good, we're going to download, we're sort of, because we're going to download a, an item. And then I want the same um, icon on my export partial or export selected button. So uh, just I can copy and paste. I don't have to pick it from the select button. And so let's see if we've done that. So now we've completed our, um, we have an icon there. And if we start picking items, we have a export selected. So just uh, to demonstrate functionality before I flip this into Bootstrap 5, I click the export all, I get uh, an Excel spreadsheet. It's opening on another screen. And it has the name, whatever, whatever columns I had selected, it has all of them. So that's a nice dynamic export. So here we go. Let's flip this to Bootstrap 5. Now this, this page was uh, created by uh, uh, by hand, not by 
an entity. So the conversion is going to have to be by entity. So we can go to pages and advanced appearance. And it's again a page builder. We're going to pick the Bootstrap 5 version of the theme of the layout. And so that's going to provide all of Bootstrap 5. We refresh and we start to see this kind of conflict message. And so now it's time to just flip everything over. So as we talked about before, the forms, which in this case, it's a choose fields form. You just uh, come in and change it to Bootstrap 5, save it. And we're going to have to take a look and make sure it still works the same way. We still have the same error. It's gone to Bootstrap 5. We've got a slightly different look. But because this hasn't been changed yet, we still get the warning message. The way to change a grid or a listing over is in views. We turn off the legacy view. And typically, you would either turn on data table, which is the, the, uh, the type of listing we had a minute ago, or you could uh, turn on cards. Or we could do, uh, in this case, we'll do both just for fun. This is kind of to demonstrate functionality. I probably won't leave it this way. So now we see that the, the grid has flipped over to say it's a dynamic grid. We still have our export buttons with icons and uh, buttons over here. And um, because I selected cards, we can also view them in card view as well. That's the card view. Um, so after having done this, we're, I'm going to click export all. We still get our Excel spreadsheet. Uh, we can look at it and it still has the same column. So functionality hasn't been impacted. Um, notice that under the Bootstrap 5 template, we now have checkboxes, which is kind of cool. And the ability to check all or uncheck all uh, built in uh, here. And as we do it, uh, notice too that um, the button shows in advance and just has a, a very light zero in it. So that's a little change of functionality. And so we can pick some items. And uh, if we say export selected, this will be interesting. This is one of those errors I mentioned that, that we're, uh, we knew we were going to be uh, encountering um, and, and we'll fix before this goes to production release. But the, um, the extra information that's required inside this uh, listing to make export selected work uh, hasn't been done yet. And in the same way, if we were to click details, it, we get the, the same error. This, it, it doesn't have the ability to know what it's doing yet. So we're, we're working to fix that one. Uh, if, you encountered, um, if you encountered an error like that while you were working, and you didn't know for sure whether it was just a Bootstrap 5 thing or, or a version 120 thing, you could flip this um, page back to um, the legacy view and see if it solves the issue. So for example, if we go to views and uh, turn these things off and go back to legacy view and try it that way, um, we'll see that the details button actually shows content and the export button, um, the partial export button. Um, well, in this case, we uh, there was another error. So I don't know uh, I, I don't know about that one. Didn't expect that from surprise. Um, but if it worked in, in legacy, probably this is probably because I didn't flip the whole page back to Bootstrap 3. But if there was an error, uh, if the error goes away when you flip back to Bootstrap 3, that's a clue that uh, you, you're going to have to leave that page of Bootstrap 3 and report the error to us. So uh, we're going to leave this one. Um, let's see. I'm going to leave this partially uh, back to uh, data table view. So fully converted over into um, Bootstrap 5. And uh, just with a note that I'm going to come back here and test this when uh, we have the update to, to fix these, the export and the details functionality. So that is a, a dynamic grid. And so we, we can 
we've converted it, but we haven't uh, fully succeeded at it. And perhaps it was be something that we want to go back to um, Bootstrap three if this were a production site, and, and uh, we we failed on that. Um, so trying to keep up with where I am here, uh, we did the contributions detail page, dynamic grid. And um, so now we're gonna go on to another contribution, the touch signature contribution. So uh, again, I have my contribution list and uh, we'll take a look at what this is supposed to do. So the functionality that was built in, um, you, should, you have to understand the page before you actually do it, um, before you convert it to Bootstrap 5. So let's say I wanted to buy a $50 item. So we get the name, the amount, we click the button, it gives us a signature. So the scenario is that you're gonna hand the pad to the client, they're gonna scratch out their signature. And when their signature is complete, we're gonna email them a receipt. So receipt has the name and the email and the amount and the signature. And so uh, just a nice little little uh, functionality of showing how to in incorporate touch signature into uh, an application. So uh, this again is one that we're going to have to manually switch to Bootstrap 5. So go to advanced bootstrap five. So we've changed the theme. <coughs> We're also going to change the form settings, bootstrap five, and refresh. So the first thing that we get is a nice error that says, uh, no razor controls were defined for Bootstrap 5 in field currency. This is our, uh, our way of saying uh, the currency field, uh, that, that one no longer, the, one, the currency field that was previous and, and made sense in Bootstrap 3 uh, doesn't, it, it was obsolete and uh, not carried forward into um, Bootstrap 5. We've been talking about that in the weeks previous. And this is a pretty easy fix. We go to the currency field. Notice it says it's currency obsolete. Your choices here are you can either convert, you can switch back to Bootstrap 3. It'll continue to work just fine. If you want to advance this page to Bootstrap um, 5, then you'll need to come down and pick, uh, or instead of choosing currency obsolete, we can just convert this field to currency. And when we save, the page will now render. So now we can test out the functionality again, make sure everything's fine. And um, I'll just let you know in advance that we do have uh, another bug here that we are going, that will be fixed before you get uh, your hands on this product once it gets out of beta. Uh, notice I'm gonna say $98,000 is what we're going to, uh, to do. And when we submit it, uh, some of the digits were truncated. It's an issue that we know about, we're working on. But uh, it still works for the $65. So they get a $98,000 item for $65. Uh, we still can do a signature. Um, it still works. It shows the amount and the, uh, the signature. So. Um, this, uh, again, this is like a 90% success. It still demonstrates the touch signature. And once we get this currency field straightened out, it will work just fine. So uh, that's um, second contribution and yet another kind of error that we might encounter. Um, so I'm going to keep going on my list here. That was touch signature. Uh, we have another one that's about manipulating entities. Uh, that's this one here. This shows how to manipulate entities. And um, this really was written before we renamed, we may rename them to uh, lists. So it says entities, but this contribution really refers to lists. And so this is uh, a, a repeating um, theme. We come in and open up the page. Uh, we have two output options. We can either output 
all columns or uh, first last. It doesn't really matter what's going on behind the scenes in, in this case. We just want to make sure that it keeps working the same way. So we'll submit this and take a look at the output um, before we convert it, and then we'll make sure it still works. So we get some, we get um, columns out to G, to rows, some data. That's the output that you get when you do all columns, uh, first, last. I mean, you have to understand your application, right? In this case, we, it's just outputting some, some data. This one is just two columns, uh, uh, two rows. So we'll do the steps to convert it to Bootstrap 5, which is a different appearance, the layout of Bootstrap 5. And convert the form. It is a form, so we'll convert it to Bootstrap 5. We can hit it. Brush the screen. And so now we get the slightly different look of the Bootstrap 5 theme, but we still have our selection box. We can still hit the button and still get the output. So we would go through and test to make sure that this is what we intended. But this page was 100% success. It changed over to Bootstrap 5, no problem. Um, so that's manipulating entities. I'm going to keep up with where I am in my presentation here. The next one is viewing an entity or list contents. So this one is a little bit more involved, but it's going to work out just fine. Viewing entity content. Um, and I'm going to go to that contribution. So this contribution has an introduction. It has a, a display button. And then this is, has an image that shows how it's set up. This it doesn't actually do anything, it's just an image. And so uh, what this, again, it's hard to explain what this contribution does, but it outputs some JSON. If we were to take the JSON and put it into a JSON viewer like Code Beautify, um, we can paste it and beautify it and see exactly what it's outputting. It's outputting user information. So we wanted to continue doing just that after we convert it to Bootstrap 5. So we'll, we'll, we'll just go through the process and make sure it still works. Uh, so we go to Appearance, change it to Bootstrap 5. And go to the form, change it to Bootstrap 5. Refresh. So we see a, a, a couple of differences here, which is kind of interesting. We still have the button, we still have the image, but display image now has a title. I think this is a feature, not a bug, and something really easy to solve. If we were to, uh, if we want to change this layout back to the way it looked before, we can go to our entity and um, Change this to instead of um, label align to the uh, right, we're going to just, oops, uh, we'll change the label align to the top. And also on the display image, I'm just going to remove the label altogether. I don't want a uh, label uh, for this field. I just want it to display. So I'm just getting rid of that. And so if we take a look at it now, it, it looks more like the original. Point is, you might have to tinker a little bit with your layouts um, after you do a conversion. And so we can take a look at that. However, it's converted to Bootstrap 5. It's not showing any errors. And uh, it's still outputting JSON, and if we were to copy and paste this, uh, maybe I didn't copy it. Interesting. I thought I had this copied here. Let's try again. Very carefully. Copy and 
and paste. Uh, you gotta do it carefully, but it still beautifies it. It's still uh, same first name, last name, create date kind of content. So the thing still works after we uh, have computer converted it to Bootstrap 5. And we did a couple of layout changes. So that's that one. And um, so, um, well, let's see. One last one, we'll do um, a thing called Search Boost JSON that we'll take a look at. And the, uh, the, the purpose of this one is to be able to search under form control. So if you wanted to search for the word JSON, it, this is showing me all the documents uh, in this system that has the word JSON in it. You can see it's even highlighted it for us. And in the same way, we could paste this into um, a JSON viewer to see what it looked like. So it's a little bit easier to read. And so if we beautified that, you can see it has uh, what it is and its title and its description and who the author was and all the stuff. So you'd be able to query a search index and, uh, and, and get entries back that you can then manipulate through the common language of JSON. So uh, here's this thing, it, um, it's still in Bootstrap 3, so we'll do the conversion on it. Pretty straightforward. Uh, Five, save. We get the conflict message. Easy to fix. Go to all forms, change it over to Bootstrap 5, save, refresh. Now we get a slightly different layout. Again, this is the kind of thing you're going to encounter when you, uh, when you do this. And so you might end up end up tinkering, tinkering, tinkering with your options. Um, I'm going to change the query and run, run it there, but it's finding all the occurrences of this other thing and it's still producing nice JSON. So it all works just fine. But you could adjust the layout a little bit. Okay. Um, having done all that, I'm just going to wrap up and there's going to be a couple minutes for questions or we can end early. The uh, so what we did today, we upgraded a live site to uh, we upgraded the DNN, we upgraded the Clinton app to version 1.20, and we started the process of upgrading Bootstrap 5, uh, upgrading from 3 to 5. Um, Bootstrap 3 in this release is designed to work as it did previously, and so. If you don't convert, aside from the breaking changes that were mentioned, like the font awesome icons, you're going to have uh, after you after you upgrade to version 120, it's going to continue to work uh, as it did. That's the design. Um, Bootstrap 5 is the direction we're going. Uh, that's where we're investing all the effort uh, in in uh, enhancements that you're going to see. And there's some cool things coming down the, the pike, and I'm not going to. Uh, announce them ahead, but Bootstrap 5 opens up a, a, a new uh, layout options for us and uh, better stability. So Bootstrap 5 is the direction. And so we recommend that uh, after you get 120 installed and uh, that, that you uh, start the process to move to Bootstrap 5. And as you've seen, it isn't hard, but it is manual. You have to understand the application and be able to go through and test. And so you got to consider your scenario, whether it's important to, for you to um, be able to, uh, whether you need to do that on a clone or a backup and, and do it uh, so that you know the answers before you do your production system, or that uh, if your site is simple enough, you can do it live. So there was a, a question, and it's really more of a, of a statement. It was just helpful to see pages and modules being upgraded this way. So thanks, Mark. I'm glad uh, that it added something. Um, with that, I'm going to invite Bogdan to come and. Uh, oh, uh, dynamic is dynamic grids a new name for listings? No, dynamic. Uh, the the correct name for grids are our, our uh, published name is 
listings. The dynamic grids feature that I showed today was, it probably should be renamed dynamic listings, but it's the way of using a listing or a grid to show fields in a dynamic way that you show the columns that people want and not, uh, not others. But that's not a feature of Plantin app. That's using low code to make Plantin app do some things that uh, it didn't otherwise do out of the box. So that one showed the columns that we wanted and exported the columns that we wanted. Yep. It makes Patrick, Patrick uh, wants to talk more about that one. No, oh, I was just indicating they were answered, that's all. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> you answered it live. Okay, sorry, I thought I'd yeah, yeah, try to yeah. drag you in for no <laughs> Just making sure that it was indicated, that's all. All right, good. Yeah, actually, if you go back to that example with uh, dynamic grids, Dale, I think uh, maybe the confusion there was that uh, we added a setting to display the module title inside the listing. Uh, so that's why you see a double title, right? Yep. And so that would be, that's a setting, correct? Yep. Uh, display title. So we could uncheck that and, and we get a little bit of a different look. Uh, so instead of displaying it inside, see that this was being displayed by DNN, dynamic grid was being displayed by DNN. And, and so we were showing it twice. Alternately, we could go into uh, edit the settings of this module and not display it through DNN. And that's the page settings. We see we were displaying the container and a container that had card and title. Maybe we, we say card no title and update it. So now it is not being displayed by DNN and maybe makes more sense to uh, display it using our setting. The benefit of this is just getting a little bit of a neater look, a little more compact look. And so, um, now it appears just once and, um, and inside the circle, not, not in two places. So, cool. All right. Um, with that, we are happy that you joined us today and uh, hope that you got something out of it. We're, we're uh, encouraging you to move into this uh, new world of 1.20 when it's available to you. And uh, we thank for all of our beta testers for the help in getting us there. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everyone. Bye.